Good afternoon to everyone, and uh, thank you for coming to our session and our presentation. Um, we would uh, present a very beautiful forest in Ghana uh, to you, um, and we invited you also that you can share your ideas. Uh, we want to save this forest. Um, it's a forest with um, very beautiful biodiversity, uh, but it's also rich with minerals. So it's in the mix. Um, there is a plan of government to mine this forest uh, for bauxite. And um, we've been engaging government and trying to present alternative such that we can save this forest. Uh, so you are very important. Um, thank you, Lisa. Okay, I removed this. Um, you are very, the ideas you share here are very important. We'll take it back home and engage with government further. Um, the first action we've done is that we've gone to court to prevent um, government from going ahead. But whilst doing that, we know that our government should also embark on development. So we're going around uh, looking for ideas of how we can uh, develop this place, not destructively, um, um, for, for jobs, for the communities around it. So um, you are welcome uh, to this short presentation. Right, OK. So. All right, OK. Yep. OK, thank you. It works, yeah. Right, OK, so um, this is the Atiwa Range uh, Forest um, in the eastern region part of Ghana. It's about 95 kilometers from the capital of Accra. Um, this forest has gone through several regimes. Uh, it was de designated as a, a forest reserve in 1926. But since then, um, it's been um, a special biological area, uh, a hill sanctuary, an important bird area. And just recently, uh, because of a frog species that was um, found there, where 95% of the population are there, uh, it became um, a zero extension um, site, um, which means that it cannot be, um, the place cannot be destroyed. It cannot be used for any de development that is destructive. Um, there are communities around um, uh, the, the forest. They are usually agrarian, uh, so farming, uh, cocoa farming um, is important. There are other economic activities such as um, rubber production and oil palm. Um, why Atiwa is important is the richness of it by biodiversity and also as a water tower. Um, so, you know, the species are, is a very important bird area. Um, over 200 uh, species of, of birds and mammals and amphibians and plants. Um, it has 70%, 70% of the butterfly um, stock of Ghana. So over 700 species of butterflies and about 500 yet to be confirmed. Uh, five of them is endemic uh, to uh, Atiwa. Uh, but aside biodiversity, it's also a huge water tower. Um, has three of the 16 rivers of Ghana um, as a source from, uh, from the forest. Um, Atiwa is a mountain uh, forest um, the 5% remnant of the upper, um, the evergreen upland forest, which used to be from the, um, the West African coast, from Senegal up to Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, that's 5% uh, of the remnant remaining um, is Atiwa. Um, so these um, important uh, species would all go because of a threat of bauxite uh, mining. Um, this proposed government uh, policy um, has been contested by civil society groups um, led by Arusha Ghana and Arusha International. 
Um, aside bauxite mining, um, there are other um, gold mining on the periphery, but that is not the biggest threat. I think the biggest threat is uh, government itself uh, wanting to uh, get this forest. This picture is um, a live bauxite site in Ghana, the Awaso uh, bauxite uh, site, which is currently being mined. And we put it alongside here to let you know that Atiwa would become like this um, if the proposed mining goes ahead. So such a beautiful forest will be reduced to this with all the pollution that comes with uh, bauxite mining. Right, okay, so um, this is the forest at the moment, um, and then this is Awaso, you know, so, you know, this is what um, it would be. And that is what we don't want to happen because we will lose all the bi biodiversity we have in Atiwa. Um, at the moment, um, Atiwa has over 100 species of IUCN uh, threatened, you know, species that are on the red list, about 100 of them are already in Atiwa. Um, so from amphibian to birds and to plants and to primates, uh, the uh, Mangabe uh, was recently discovered there. Uh, it's assumed to have been lost in Ghana, but it was rediscovered um, in the forest. Um, the eagle owl, uh, which has not been spotted for 85 years in Ghana, was recently uh, rediscovered there. So we stand to lose all this um, if um, government goes ahead uh, with the mining. Right, so we, we've, been, we've been brainstorming on some green pathway with development partners. So the European Union, for instance, um, has commissioned a study uh, to come out with some green pathways to put Atiwa so that it can generate um, income and also preserve uh, the forest. So ecotourism is one of the main ones. It's a mountainous forest. There are a lot of potential for ecotourism. Also, uh, because of the forest, there is a, a good microclimate uh, for agriculture. And the area is one of the, the best places for cocoa production in Ghana. So we feel that if a cocoa processing plant is put there uh, and production is encouraged, there will be job creation uh, for the people. Um, also, uh, the various um, uh, carbon emission uh, programs um, also can be undertaken there. So all these are our suggestions. Uh, for, uh, for government. Um, we also, um, okay, so we're also thinking that um, the area is ripe for uh, many non Tima forest product um, items that can be developed uh, for uh, jobs and also for alternative livelihood. So these are spices and um, pharmaceutical uh, products that um, are in the forest and in the peripheral of the forest uh, that can be, uh, it production can be encouraged um, for, uh, you know, to generate revenue and also for jobs uh, for the people. So this is also part um, of, of what can be done um, or the resources that can be developed, um, you know, for, for the forest. There, there have been suggestions of, um, because Atiwa is, um, is one of the best forests in Ghana, it contributes to the nationally determined contribution uh, for UNF, uh, C accounting uh, for the country. So we're thinking that it would qualify for many emission reduction programs uh, that can bring uh, money and that can be pursued. So far, it's not been thought of and it's not been um, you know, something that the, the government want to do, but we encouraging uh, that that can be looked at uh, to bring um, revenue to government for development. Um, financing 
um, is an issue and we would really do with suggestions and also partners that we can engage later. So there are, we suggested um, some financing instrument uh, for, this, for the development, let's say ecotourism uh, development. So public instrument, various public instrument um, that you know, government can, can, be in, uh, can give um, in other industries such as housing, um, government has given um, grant and subsidized loans uh, to, uh, to, to encourage investors. And we are thinking that government can do that. Um, government itself, through the Tourism Development Agency, uh, can be involved in some of this. So we are also seeking views on some financing options and mechanisms that our continued engagement with government uh, can suggest. Um, there could also be private sector um, uh, financing instrument. There are various ones that are debt, um, equity um, instruments that we have suggested um, that uh, government you know, can look at um, in, in getting finance for development for Atiwa. Um, there are also other options. I've already mentioned uh, Red Plus financing um, and also some bilateral and multilateral funds. We are engaging um, other uh, multilateral agencies such as the World Bank and uh, I mentioned the EU who have already uh, on board. Uh, the Netherlands government has done uh, very well and uh, still interested. So we engage the embassies on some of these things. The US embassy um, has been a, a big partner uh, in this process. Uh, but we are also encouraging um, uh, even pension funds uh, to invest in the potential of the area um, in terms of tourism and other um, and eco uh, tourism uh, facility. Our engagement in Atiwa, you know, to, uh, to save Atiwa has gone on for, for some time. It's gone past um, various government. Um, a minister, a government minister once, you know, said this, um, where he thinks that um, Atiwa is a very important resource for biodiversity and also for water resources for Ghana. Um, and for that much, um, raising it to a national park status is what is going to uh, save it. And we agree to that. Um, we've been to court now, so the case is in court. And that, is, that, is, that gives hope uh, because we can enjoin government uh, if there is any attempt uh, to mine it until the case is determined. And we are very hopeful uh, that our constitution says that we have right to a uh, uh, clean environment and the court will side with us uh, on that. Um, I will need um, interactions and questions uh, from you, but also ideas. Uh, so I'm ending the presentation here. Thank you very much for your attention. And um, I will ask um, that if you have any question or clarification, um, you know, we will discuss that. But if you have any ideas also, um, that we, you know, partners that you, are, you can connect us to for onwards engagement, we'll be grateful. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Um, is there a microphone that can pass around? Thank you. Um, my name is Urias Gold from Liberia. I work for Eco Health Alliance. Thanks for the presentation. I have a, a, maybe I'll say three questions. Um, one is you mentioned Alaska mining is one of the threats to you know the forest. Um, my question is: Is there Alaska mining within the protected area or closer to the protected area? Uh, if yes, then the second question is. Uh, bauxite uh, mining, which you said is a threat also, is it going to be created within the park? Uh, is the license given for the mining of bauxite within the park? If so, isn't this gazetted as a protected area by law? 
so then the government cannot enter. I mean, I'm speaking from experience in Liberia. If we create a protected area, the government makes a commitment by law that there's no other destructive activities that can be allowed. It will happen, but it will not be legalized. And then the last point of you saying that you want to put in a cocoa processing plant to create job. Uh, we know traditionally, um, if you create a cocoa processing plant close to the protected area, that economic growth or economic activity may put pressure, you know, on the protected area because you're bringing more people closer to a place that should be protected. And then you may not be able to prevent them from going into the park. So how are you planning to do that? Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to the first uh, point on if there's a large scale mining uh, closer, uh, at the moment, no, uh, there have been a lot of small scale uh, mining of gold on, in the peripheral of the, of the forest, but not inside. But that is not destructive, um, you know, as large scale mi uh, bauxite mining. So uh, to, the, to the point, there is no um, large scale mining. They are in other locations. The photos I showed are in other locations. Um, the second point, um, of, um, if, if the bauxite mining is going to be in the protected area. Um, yes, okay, so um, it's a mountain forest, and the hills have the bauxite deposit. All right, so if that is going to go ahead, it means that the heart of the forest will be, will be attacked. It means that the mine would be inside the forest, and you know, the mountain will be rigged down, um, in, the, in the photos of the presentation, uh, this is Awasu with the hills, you know, and then it's, it's cut down because that's bauxite mining. You take down the soil. Um, so, and definitely uh, the, the forest will go. Um, on the third point of um, a cocoa industry, you know, around protected area, um, we with, with think, and we, in 2015, um, there was a study, a tip study that was done on the forest. Um, and we realized that uh, with alternative industries such as cocoa there, uh, one, yes, it would bring uh, people there, um, but it would also enhance income, you know, such that the dependence of the community on the forest would rather be below. Okay, so people can afford to buy gas instead of going to the forest to cut firewood. Okay, so those um, dynamics have been, have, been, have been done, and that um, industries such as cocoa, which the farmers are involved already, will rather be value addition in terms of, you know, they selling, the, you know, selling and be working in the, in, the, in the factory will give them more income, and that will reduce the dependency uh, of the forest. In terms of law and status of the forest, it is a forest reserve. Naturally, um, it shouldn't have been under threat. But government can easily change that policy because it's a forest reserve. In fact, that is the reason why um, our demand is that it should be made a national park. National park has higher status. Um, it usually goes under legislative instruments. So parliament would have, would have done that, and it is difficult for any re reversal uh, of that. At the moment, it's um, Forest Reserve and an executive instrument. The president can just sign, and then the status uh, can be taken. Um, so a national park uh, will do it. Yeah. Yes, Thank please. you, uh, and congratulations for this effort. Uh, I want to say that we would like to join our force to the US. I work for a uh, USID program in in Ghana, but West Africa. And we find similar problems in different landscapes across the Upper Guinea Forest. So what I'm planning to do is, in January, February, I'll contact you. I will organize a team to visit you and hear from you directly as I hear from you. And we will try to get some press relief from this that will um, attract more attention to USID. USID is already there, but we try to push it again and saying that it's not just your case, 
is similar cases across the remaining landscape in West Africa. If you do that, we are trying to solve your problem, but your problem is a learning case to solve other problems with that intention. Thank you. All right, thank you. That is welcome. Um, in the campaign we've had, it's been a collective effort, um, local groups and international groups uh, together uh, have done this. So, yes, Liberia and, um, and Ghana, um, you know, similar circumstances. So, you know, we would, we would welcome that and uh, I'm prepared to share some contact um, after the session. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, yes, we still have um, some few minutes more. Uh, for interaction, so. Hello, I was wondering if you could share some more information about the legal action you've taken. Okay, okay. All right, okay, so um, in uh, 2020, uh, year 2020, um, we, we saw that um, the, um, the government was serious uh, to do the mining. Um, there was a photo I showed of the forest and there was a, a red, a red line uh, going through it. And that was when uh, a prospecting license was given um, to, you know, to, to go and check the, the, you know, the amount of minerals there. So we realized government was serious. So we mobilized uh, some other civil society groups, uh, 11 in all. And then we, 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 we came out with a lawsuit um, against government. Um, it's, been, it's been very slow. Uh, we've been going to court for the past uh, one and a half years. Um, the case will go for full trial in January. Uh, January 14th, we are back uh, to court uh, for, for the case to be. We had some private citizens uh, join, join the case um, in Ghana. Uh, we have a very good uh, human rights lawyer, um, you know, supporting, uh, supporting and leading, uh, leading the case. Um, so, so that is a, how long it would go, uh, we, don't, we don't know, uh, because the legal system in Ghana can really be, be slow, considering the fact that we've almost been there for two years, and it's now that we're going to go for a full trial. Uh, but we are hopeful um, the, the, the legal system uh, we have confidence in, and we have a very strong case. Um, I think the public is becoming more aware and supportive of us, especially uh, of the water, the water sources. These are um, together, uh, Atiwa uh, give water to 5 million Ghanaians. We are just about 30 million, so a greater part uh, of, the, of the society. Uh, so there is a lot of enthusiasm of the public. Um, that, and also, I mean, mining, mining resources are not being used effectively by government. So there is the momentum and the support um, on our side, and we're hoping that it will carry on uh, during the case. Um, the one positive thing is that whilst the case is on, um, any attempt to mine, uh, we can go for an injunction. The court will stop them. Uh, so that is also uh, good news, that as long as the case has not been determined, um, then there will be no mining. Uh, so that is, that is very good. Okay, I think, yes, we have uh, time for about one or two. We have five minutes more, so. Sorry, just a follow-up. Um, you said Atiwa is not a legally protected national park, right? It's a forest reserve. Yes. It's a forest reserve, meaning, you know, it was designated as a government policy and government can reverse that policy through executive decision. That's what you said. My question is... On what grounds then are you filing a lawsuit? Because I don't see like, you know, government can argue that where we made a policy decision, executive decision to protect this place. Now we're making an executive decision to reverse. I mean, I've seen those cases in Liberia where the government issued a logging concession in one of the national forests. Yeah. And we were arguing, I know you can't do that. Government said, well, it's a policy decision. We're just reversing the policy decision. It's not a law that we're breaching. So what grounds are you really 
arguing that government cannot. Mind you, now these are two natural resources because if you say forest is a natural resource and it's been depleted, mm -hmm. government can argue bauxite is a natural resource that we need to extract. Yeah. I mean, I'm just telling you I'm a lawyer, so sometimes it can be government can come from different angles. So what grounds are you really using to sort of argue right, okay. that this should not happen? Okay. Right, okay, thank you. No, I mean, we, we just go in by, um, by the sovereign rights of the people and also um, the, the right that nature has. Um, so this is um, a place you know, that has endangered species, that has endemic uh, species who have right to, to exist. Um, also, our constitution says that we have a right to clean environment, including clean water. So if we have a place that gives water to five million people, then those or that population has the right to have clean water throughout. Okay, so, so we go in on that basis. In fact, government has the right to even undo the laws that it has. Even if the place is gazetted as a national park and government want to, it can, it can do that. That means that if a place is not even under law, but its importance to the citizen is, is there, then that's paramount. Government is not of itself, it's of the people. So if the people are saying yes, and also there's a bit of the constitution that says they have right to a clean environment, uh, then a legal case can be, can be made out of that. So we're going in the name of nature, we're going in the name of the right to clean environment. And we are very confident uh, that the court will grant our request. All right. All right, okay. So um, there's not much time. So thank you all very much. Um, I will take your contact, those of you who want to, uh, who want to share some ideas with, with us, especially of the potential of the place how it can be developed, uh, linkages with partners on financing and all that. Um, I'll hang around, um, and we are here most of the time. So I'll be, I'll be prepared to connect. Thank you very much for your time, and, uh, and God bless you.
Do you think it? Oh, okay. 